Uh, universal basic income, well, obviously, as I said, it varies. You're typically looking at, as you say, of a payment of, say, at least the amount of, say, the job seeker payment that, that we have in Australia at the moment, which is around about sort of $14,000, $15,000 per year, um, and potentially higher than that. So, say, maybe the age pension or even higher. I think the Greens at the moment, the Greens Party, are actually suggesting, I think it's about 1150 or 1160 per fortnight, which is a, a fair way above even the age pension. So, the age pension is about sort of nearly $1,000 a fortnight. And I think the Greens are after a payment of over 1100 per fortnight, I think for all adults in Australia. Uh, so at the moment, current welfare payments might go to around about say, oh look, maybe around about 4 million people in Australia at varying levels. Say job seeker about 600 a fortnight up to say 1,000 a fortnight for the age pension. Uh, whereas if you had a full blown universal basic income, say as say the Greens are suggesting, you'd be looking at about, um, you know, a payment of $1,150 a fortnight or getting up towards $30,000 a year for around about 20 million Australians. So it's a, a huge difference. And obviously that requires um, some rather astronomical numbers in terms of, of financing. But of course, there are different models of, of basic income. That's just, I guess, what we most commonly perceive as being universal basic income, where everybody gets uh, enough to get by. And obviously someone has to pay for it either through more personal income tax or a wealth tax or some other form of tax. Right. Okay. What are the different models, Ben? What, what sort of things are you thinking of? Well, look, there's various models in terms of, I guess, generosity. So the most generous one that I've seen is really what the Greens are currently suggesting. Um, and that is where you've got about $30,000 per year for every single adult in Australia. Um, Going down from that, there's others who have proposed, I think um, Ross Garno, not that long ago, proposed a, a similar system where everybody gets, a every adult gets a certain amount of money. I think it was more like the, the job seeker or the old new start payment, which is more like about sort of thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000 per year. So a lot less expensive. Um, and then going down from there, you have what, um, I guess we've, we've looked at a few different models that are much cheaper than that. And that's where you've got more of a means tested approach or what in, in one of the papers we've called affluence testing. So that is the higher your income or the more wealth you've got, the less you would receive. So it's a little bit like means testing. There's other, there's other versions that are similar. Uh, so things like a negative income tax, that's where everybody gets like a tax refund, a full, full tax refund of say, maybe $10,000 per person. But as your income increases, you lose some of that. And at some point it goes to zero. Um, so that's an, another way of looking at it. Another one is sort of a guaranteed minimum income. That's where everyone has a, a sort of a guaranteed minimum amount. That might be, say, you've got at least $10,000 per year. And again, that's means tested. So the more you earn, the less of that you get. And obviously, at some point, it, it um, peters out to, to nothing. So that's sort of the, the basic models. Um, obviously, the full-blown basic income is easily the most expensive and I dare say the most unlikely to ever um, ever to be, say, brought into legislation in Australia or to ever pass legislation in Australia. Um, Whereas the guaranteed minimum, minimum income, that might be something that's a little more realistic. Um, uh, obviously, they're all quite different to our current, you know, very tightly means tested system. Uh, we also have a lot of conditionality on our current payment system, our current welfare system, particularly if you're working age. Obviously, for an age pensioner, um, if you're under a certain income limit, a certain wealth limit, you get that payment. But if you're of working age, unless you're dis disabled, there's usually some sort of fairly strict sort of um, workplace, uh, sort of, I guess, uh, work, work, um, uh, work requirements that one must sort of, must, must get through. Yeah. And that's allowed Australia to have a, well, a very cost effective welfare system, you could argue, or one that, uh, it, it, I mean, arguably the benefit of means testing is you can assist the people who really need it at the, at a low fiscal cost or that that's the, that's the theory, isn't it? So the, you could argue that, well, that, that's, is, you know, what's wrong with that? Isn't that a great idea? I mean, UBI is sort of moving away a long way from that. It's the opposite of means testing, isn't it? Is that right? Yeah, so the current system, Gene, just to put it in perspective, so we, we currently pay out about a little over $100 billion per year in, in um, welfare payments to adults. There's another sort of 20 or so million to, uh, in family payments, that, which is effectively for the cost of children. So you put that to one side, if you will. So about $100 billion. Um, so the most expensive welfare system under a UBI, so under the green scheme, would be somewhere around about $500 billion per year. Uh, so you're looking at an additional $400 billion per year. And keep in mind, Gene, current 
current um, federal tax re tax receipts is about 500 billion. So you go from 500 billion to 900 billion, uh, that's an unbelievable amount of money. And as you probably remember well, Gene, we had a big argument, big fight about um, carbon pricing in say 2012. That was over a, about a $5 billion tax. Now, regardless of what you thought of the carbon price, we're having a big argument over 5 billion. How would we go with an additional 400 billion? Now, having said that, of course, you don't have to have the full blown measure the full-blown universal basic income, but even the more sort of the, the cheaper versions, say the um, like the affluence tested model that we've we've modeled was more like a sort of a, a bare minimum of $100 billion per year. So you're still looking at you know, having to sort of double the welfare system in Australia and knock on from that is to increase taxes by, you know, 20, 30% across the country. So I think um, in the current environment, that's very unlikely to ever happen, uh, but it's still it's an interesting idea to, to think about, I guess.